In this video, I'm going to give you a general overview of how to operate traction, as well as how to set it up to best follow along with the video series. So I have traction open. You can see the projects tab and the settings tab. Easily enough, you can switch back and forth between those two things. You might notice there's no menus. There's really nothing much up here in the menu section like you'd have with a lot of programs. The menu is actually handled down here in the controls panel in the lower left corner. And the only thing you'll find up here on the traction menu that you really would ever use is quit traction. You can also do the th same thing by clicking here to close the program. Another thing you'll quickly notice as you explore traction is pop-up help. So if we point to things, we'll get pop-up help messages all over the place. Different objects that we point to will have both pop-up and rollover help. Rollover help appears over here. If I go over here to this item, you'll see that we get a little line of text that helps us identify what that is. Sometimes we'll also get pop-up help. Now the pop-up help can get annoying and it gets old really fast. You can always get that pop-up help with a key command by default F10. Later in this video, I'm gonna reassign that to F1. So I'll show you how that's done as well. But for now, we're gonna disable that. So you go down here to the left corner where it says help and turn off pop-up help. So we'll leave it off for now. If you ever want pop-up help to come up, then just point at the thing you want help on like this and hit F10 and there the pop-up help comes right back. Right now we see projects and settings tab. If we open and edit, basically click on a project, double click on the edit, which is like an arrangement for a song, we'll get additional tabs for each edit that we currently have open. Any of these tabs can be undocked. For example, let's undock this edit by just pulling it free like that. Now we have it as a separate floating panel. I can move it off to another screen if I want to. I can drag it back onto this screen and I can redock it. We could do the same thing with any tabs. To redock it, you grab it by the name of the tab and then if you get it near the tab, you'll see this red mark. That's the insert point where we want to drop it. Tabs can also be rearranged in this way. There's also a plus here. If you click that, you can create a new project or you can quickly jump to a tab or create a new edit. Back on the projects page, the active projects area really acts like a recent projects. Anything that you open will actually stick here. You can rearrange what's here. You can add folders to these. And these are not really open in the normal sense. They're really just bookmarks into those projects. When you click on them, you'll see the resources for those projects. I would suggest that as you get started with traction, just open the edit and leave all of these files alone. Now here's an important thing about the design of traction. When you click on just about any object on the screen, the properties for that object appear down here in the property section of the controls panel. The controls panel is the lower section of the screen down here, including the menu, and the transport will appear when we look at an actual edit. But down here we'll get properties, and this changes in the context of what you click. So if I click on an edit, you'll see that this completely changes to match that. If I click on a WAV file, then you can see it changes to match that. This is just generally the way Traction works. It's the same for clips. It's the same for effects and plugins. Throughout Traction, the details of whatever you have selected appears right down there in the lower center part of the screen. Next, I want to show you how to create a new project. Just click a new project right here on the Projects tab. That pops up this dialog box. I'm just going to call this Hello World. And we're going to navigate to our Traction Projects folder. So I'll click right here and then navigate down to my Music Drive, my Traction folder, and then my Projects folder, and click Open. And that will set the path to save this new project. So I'll create the project. And what that does on the disk is it creates a folder named with the name of that project, and it creates what's called an edit. This TRK edit file is created inside there. And if we open that, you can see that we've got a few tracks set up. There's really nothing recorded in there, but actually we're ready to record at any point. You can see that my audio interfix is actually picking up my mics. If I enable this for recording and hit R to record, I actually can start recording audio right away. So Traction is really ready to go as soon as you open it. It's ready to record. 
And it's one of the kind of cool things about tracks. So I'm going to just hit the space bar to stop that recording. You'll see my waveform appear in there. So as you can see, you can have more than one song open at the same time or more than one edit. I'm going to switch back to this sample project or a demo tune. So I just want to show you the basics of how to navigate within an edit. We can start and stop playback over here in the transport section in the lower right by clicking play. Clicking again will stop it. You can do the same thing with the space bar. Now you can reposition the cursor by clicking on any empty space within the project, like between these clips. So if I click here, you'll see the cursor goes to this point here. If I hit play again, and when I hit stop, you see it jumps back to the point at which I started playback. Now there's an option in here that says return cursor to start position when play stops. If I turn that off, then the space bar will work more like play and pause. Meaning that it doesn't wind back to the point where you started playback. Most of the time I like to have that off so that the cursor doesn't jump back. Also the cursor represents the playhead or the playback time and I just call it the cursor. You can reposition it if you go into the time bar just above the cursor and grab right in this area. You can see that you can freely position the cursor wherever you want. And as I said before, if you click anywhere in the background, then you can also position it. There's other ways to position it as well. One is to use the left and the right arrow keys. That will move it along. The other way is to hold down the option key. That's on Mac or Alt on a PC and click on the time bar area that will also position the cursor. Now in order to zoom in, you can use the up and down arrow keys like this. That's will zoom in and out in a horizontal dimension. Or you can do dragging from the time bar just above the cursor. Actually you can move the cursor around and then drag down and up to zoom in and out. You can adjust the track height by grabbing in this area right here and stretching the track height. Now in the lower right, there are also additional tools for zooming. You can zoom in here or you can zoom in here. And this F will reset the zoom back to where the whole edit will fit on screen. Once you get playback going, you can adjust the overall volume right here by grabbing on this volume slider in the transport section. So I'll play back. Now that is an extremely basic introduction to the operation of Traction. You can now operate the transport, you can open the demo files, you can create a new blank project, and you can adjust the playback volume. But that is enough to start exploring Traction and playing around with the features on the screen. And we're going to start getting into more details in the next video. Thanks for watching.